As you are about to see, the numbers prove it. Armed domestic violence abusers are among the most dangerous offenders in our state. And experts say getting guns out of their hands is the fastest way to save lives. King County has one of the most unique units in the nation. Their goal? To lawfully remove guns from domestic violence situations. Spotlight's Matt Markovich takes us inside the effort to show us how the unit is helping survivors. Police respond to one of the most dangerous and unpredictable calls they'll ever face, domestic violence involving a gun. This one in Tacoma ended horribly. The suspect shot by police. It's a tragic story. Somebody just got their life taken away over domestic violence. The stats are eye-opening. A firearm in the home where there is domestic violence increases the risk of homicide by 500%. Sandra Shanahan is the project director of one of the most unique domestic violence units in the country, the Regional Domestic Violence Firearms Enforcement Unit inside the King County Prosecutor's Office. Our whole purpose for existence is to intervene to lawfully remove firearms when the court has said you should not have them right now. This is the weapon surrender compliance calendar. And currently, it's King County Superior Court Judge Sean O'Donnell's job to make sure as best he can those guns have been given up. By my count, there, I believe, were nine surrendered firearms. So if you are subject to an order to surrender weapons, you got to come in and show me that you don't have any guns or dangerous weapons in your possession. Every Thursday, he calls people who've been ordered to surrender their gun. Sold it to a, a friend of a friend. Today, there's 80 calls on his calendar. Your testimony to me this morning that, that you don't have it in your car and it's not on your person? No, it was not in my car. It, uh, it was not on my person. It was on a top shelf. Like this man who claims a handgun registered to him was stolen. Took it out of the safe because I had it on my person earlier that day and I put it on the shelf and after that it's it's been gone. I am going to enter a non-compliance finding and the legislature has essentially turbocharged this effort to, to, to make sure that someone who is the subject of a protection order doesn't have any guns. Washington State just simplified ways victims of domestic violence can get a protection order. Sort of a legal force field. If you want a protection order, it doesn't matter how you describe it, the courts have to consider that protection order. You're not gonna get jammed up because you didn't use the right form. We as judges then have to accept that information and decide whether we're going to issue the protection order. And that's when the Domestic Violence Firearm Enforcement Unit comes in. And so if somebody is experiencing domestic violence or stalking or sexual assault, they can come to the court or they can file online for any of a number of different types of civil protection orders. The unit assists the victims, works with the courts and law enforcement to get the guns out of the hands of a potential abuser. Timing is critical. When a victim of domestic violence leaves, that is the most dangerous um, period of time, and that's when a lot of the lethal violence occurs. If a judge grants a firearms removal, that removal must be done immediately. Any police agency must accept the firearm, box it up and catalog it for storage, and issue a receipt to prove to judges like O'Donnell they've done so. He uses background checks and purchase information to make informed decisions. A Glock 10 millimeter, a 12 gauge D Dickinson shotgun, and an AR-15. The new law says it doesn't matter what kind of protection order, the order to surrender is going to accompany it. It's all in an effort to avoid another tragic death. If you see somebody with a pistol and uh, that's, that's angry or enraged, I would, I would guess that anything's liable to happen, so you really can't fault the police for nothing, really. Matt, if somebody's watching the broadcast right now and they're on the fence, they think maybe they need a protection order. Specifically, how do they go about doing that? Do they call 911? No, you would probably start with your local prosecutor, your county prosecutor. In the big counties, they have units that allow this to happen. In the smaller counties, they still want to be heard. Uh, you, you may want to call the local law enforcement in a smaller county. But what's happened now, it's really easy. You can go online and get the forms and do it yourself and then file with the court ex parte. You can contact that county prosecutor and you can call local law enforcement. They've made it real easy. There's no need to go out and find your own defense attorney and start that process. What happens if a protection order is issued and the detectives go to the home and the person will not give up their guns. Believe it or not, I'm being told that's a rare situation right now. Most people are cooperating. And it's how the police department that's going out there and getting the guns 
handles it. They do what's known as a warm handshake. They don't make a big SWAT presence and say, hey, we're here to get you the guns and be confrontational. They knock at the door, it has to be done in person, and they'll ask for, give you a gun case, they'll give them a gun case, and they put their weapons in there, and maybe even come back another day. If that doesn't work though, they will get a search warrant and then go into the house, and that's when you would see a large police presence. But I'm told by Judge O'Donnell, that's a rarity in this situation. But what about a legal gun owner accused of domestic violence? who says, I'm a legal gun owner. You can't take my guns away from me. What recourse do they have? Well, even if they haven't committed a crime, and as you know, if they're a felon, they shouldn't have had a gun to, to begin with. But if they haven't even committed a crime, they're completely clean, they still have to give up their guns when a judge orders that, despite the Second Amendment argument. They do have 14 days to show up in front of that same judge who gave the order to have their weapons uh, surrendered and then plead their case there. But it does come down the way the laws have been written across the country that if a judge orders them to give up their guns, despite whether or not they've been committed a crime, they're gonna to have to do so. All right, it's a cutting edge new program. We'll see if it works well. Thanks, Matt.